I'm here to tell you, if you follow Jesus, you may not have an easier life, but you will have a better life. You will have a much more fulfilled life, a happier life, a peaceful life. You see, the movies try to portray righteousness as boring. It's boring to be righteous and it's fun to, to be sinful. I'm here to tell you it's the opposite. It's always the opposite of the truth. How you doing, sir? It's opposite. You see, Hollywood, what name do they blaspheme? Every single movie and show, they, they blaspheme the name of Jesus Christ. See, they don't, you don't use your mother's name as a curse word or your father's name as a curse word. That's, that's very serious in the eyes of God. And yet Hollywood, every single movie they make, every single show that they put on television, it's blaspheme in the name of Jesus. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about the world that teaches us that we evolved from fish, that, that all this is an accident. I want you to look at all the order and beauty that we have in this earth. And you really think that nothing created everything, that an explosion created all this order and beauty. I want you to look at science, observational science. And can you point me to any explosion that created? No, because we know explosions destroy and create chaos. Right? I want you to look at the buildings. You didn't have to see that building being built to know that someone built it. You have logic and reasoning. You understand that the bricks are put in a certain order. The windows, the, the plumbing, the heating, the electricity. It all had to be perfect to, to make it livable, to make that building sustainable. How much more complex is the earth today? The earth is much more complex than a building. You are much more complex than a vehicle. Right? DNA tells us. DNA is coded information. It's an instruction manual. You see, we weren't just random accidents. We were created. We were designed by an intelligent being. You can even look at a painting. How simple is a painting? And you look at a painting. You don't have to, to see it being painted. You have logic and reasoning. You understand. How you doing, sir? You understand that a painting, the paint's put there in a specific order to create a picture, to create an image. How much more complex are you than a painting? How much more complex is this creation, is this earth, than a painting? All the beauty and order. That's why Romans 1 tells us, God says, you know I exist. I have been plainly shown to you. You're without excuse, he says. You have logic and reasoning. God has given it to you. But many of us love our sins so much that we, we compromise this truth. We shove this truth down and our conscience is crying at us. Before I was truly saved, I used to have to turn the television on and sleep with the TV on to, to drown out my conscience. That's how it was for me. I had to turn the two-hour timer. The TV would shut off automatically after two hours to drown out my conscience. Then I got saved. I became born again. I got baptized. My sins washed away clean. The weight of the sin off my shoulders. I even remember feeling lighter. And I said, I feel light today. I felt light. After I got baptized, I felt light. You see, God had washed away all that heaviness of the burdens in my life, the sin in my life that I've committed all throughout my life. And he can do the same for you. All that sin that you've accumulated over your life, you can be cleansed of it. It can be washed off your shoulders. How you doing, sir? That sin can be washed off your shoulders. You become a new creation, he says. You become born again. You see, Jesus can take that heart of stone, give you a brand new crimson heart. He can take that, that fractured mind and put the pieces back together. That anxiety and depression that you have in your life, he can replace it with hope, faith, and love. Jesus. Amen. God bless you guys. You. See, Jesus is the way maker. He's the, the miracle worker. If you're asking for a miracle in your life, he's the one to go to. He says, I am the truth. I am the way and I am the life. No one goes to the Father except by him. There's no other path. You see, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. This is a price that has to be paid. A perfect and holy God has to have this righteous justice. That's why Jesus had to come to the earth. There was no other path. There's no other way. That punishment had to be paid. That price had to be paid. And so what's that mean? That means... When we stand before God on Judgment Day, the ultimate judge, Jesus is our mediator. He is our lawyer. And God's going to look at you and say, you are guilty of all of these sins. You've committed all these crimes. And the punishment is death. And Jesus is going to say, yes, my client is guilty. However, I already paid his price in full. 
And then a God, a just, a just judge can say, yes, you are correct. You're guilty, but your punishment has been paid in full. You are free. And more importantly, you're free to live with him in his presence because a perfect and holy God, sin cannot be in the presence of a perfect and holy God. That's why people hold on to their sin. They're separating themselves from the creator, the ultimate creator, the, the most high God, the perfect and holy God. Sin cannot exist in his presence. So if you're holding on to that sin so tightly, you're pulling yourself away from a God that loves you. A God that created you, a God that formed you in the womb. You see, the Bible says, I knew before I even formed you in the womb. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, plans to give you a future, not to harm you. So God has a plan for your life. That's why Satan comes along and distracts us. He pulls you away from that path. So you're, you're stuck in the wilderness, surrounded by wolves. That's why you have anxiety in your life. Your spirit knows where you're headed. You're on that broad path. The spirit knows but you're walking in the flesh. See, the Bible says, Jesus will leave the 99 sheep that are saved. He is the good shepherd. He will leave the 99 sheep and he will go for that one lost sheep in the woods. And he says, when he finds that sheep, he hoists it on his shoulders. And he's more happy about that one lost sheep that was found than the 99 that are already back home safe. The Bible says, whenever you're saved, there's a celebration in heaven. The angels cheer. Another one has come home to us. Another one is saved. That's how precious you are to God. That's why he died for you. That's why he sent Jesus Christ to the earth to die for you. You are precious in his sight. That's why Satan fights so hard to destroy you. That's why Satan fights so hard to steal, kill, and destroy you. That's how precious you are to God. How much he loves you. God loves you very much. Very much. When he lifts you up on his shoulders, that lost sheep that was found, he is more excited about, about you than the 99 that are already saved. There's a celebration. A celebration in heaven just for you. I want you to understand the importance of this. I want you to understand the importance of salvation. The importance of your life, eternal life. That's why Jesus says to the 70 street preachers he sent out in Luke 10, he sent out 70 street preachers to go preach the gospel. When they came back, they said, Jesus, even the demons are subject to us in your name. He says, do not be happy that, at this. Be happy that your name is written in heaven. See, that's the eternal, our eternal life. Life on earth is over in the truth of an eye. Life is over like this. But the next life is eternal. That's the life that you need to be worried about. That's the life that you need to strive for. That's why Jesus says, do not build up your treasure in heaven where the rust and the thieves will steal. Build up your treasure for the next life. Build up your treasure for the next life. And dwell with him. You see, Jesus seeks a personal relationship. I'm not talking about a religion. I'm not talking about a church. I'm talking about a personal relationship with him. You see, the Pharisees, they, they were religious, right? The Pharisees, they says they walked in righteousness, but they didn't walk in his power. Right? Jesus says, they profess me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. You see, God looks at your heart. He looks at the inside. While the world looks at the outside, God looks at the inside. He looks at your heart. How is your heart? And do not worry. If your heart is bad, if your heart is, is wicked, if your heart is dark, just acknowledging that is the first step. Acknowledging that you need a Savior. Say, Jesus, my heart is wicked. My heart is dark. Jesus says, don't worry. Put your faith and trust in me and I will replace that heart. I will take that heart of stone that you have and I'll give you a brand new crimson heart. In fact, the more that you face me, the more that you go towards me, your desires will change. Your desires will shift. The more that you follow me, Jesus says, you might desire sin, but the longer you focus on me, the longer you walk that straight and narrow path, your, your heart will start to shift. Your desires will start to shift and you'll desire to walk in righteousness. Your desire to walk in the spirit. And then that, that anxiety and depression that's plaguing you, that suicidal thoughts, the depression that's plaguing you, will slowly start to fade away. And you'll start to have comfort. You'll start to have faith. You'll start to have joy, peace, comfort, strength, and courage. That's by walking in the spirit. You see, the spirit and the flesh war against one another. They're contrary to one another. So we must 
pick up our cross every single day and crucify the flesh. Crucify the desires of the flesh. And you'll be strengthened. You'll be lifted up. Start to walk in the Spirit. That's why Jesus says in Matthew 6, do not worry. Do not worry about what you're going to eat or drink or about your clothing. Your Heavenly Father clothes the birds every single day. Your Heavenly Father feeds the birds and clothes the lilies of the field. How much more important are you than the birds in the air and the, and the lilies of the field? That's why Jesus says, but first you must seek the kingdom and walk in righteousness and God will give you everything that you need. Your loving Father will give you everything and He will provide for you. That's why people are suffering because they're not walking in righteousness. They're not seeking the kingdom first. How can God bless you if you've ran away from Him? How can God work in your life if you say, I don't want you in my life? I want you to think about someone on earth that, that see, God loves you very much. Imagine Him chasing after you. He loves you very much. He wants a relationship with you. But you push Him away. You say, no, no, no. Get away from me. I don't want you. Get away from me. I don't want to be with you. Imagine that. A loving, a loving man is going to walk away. He's going to say, okay, if you don't want me, I'll walk away. And sadly, that's what we do, many do to God. We push God away from us. We say, no, no, no. I don't want you. I know you love me, but I don't want you. I want this world. I want the pleasures of sin. And that's when you feel the emptiness. That's when you're locked in a cage. And you push God away. I'm here to tell you, though, the good news. God still loves you in spite of this. God is waiting for you to come back home, just like the prodigal son. See, the Bible talks about the prodigal son, how the son asked for his inheritance early. He could go enjoy it while he's alive and young. And so his loving father gave him his inheritance and he went out to the world and spent his money on, on drugs and partying and women until he was completely broke. And this prodigal son was sleeping with the pigs, eating what the pigs eat. And he says, I'm going to go back to my father because even his servants live better than me. Even his servants are eating and having a nice bed and a roof over their heads. I'm gonna hope, and hopefully my father will let me be a servant in his house. And so when the prodigal son returned home and the father saw him, the father welcomed him with open arms. He ran towards him. Wow, my son is back. My son was dead. Now he's, he's alive. The son was surprised. The father welcomed him back with open arms. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you've lost your way. Maybe you've ran away. You went out into the wilderness. You went out into the world. I'm here to tell you, God is waiting for you with open arms. Come back. So come back to God. It's not too late. If you're hearing this message, I want you to know God is reaching out to you today. He's, he's pulling on your heartstrings today. Go back to God before it's too late. Every, every day is a gift. Every breath that we breathe is a gift. But we're not guaranteed tomorrow. Don't let Satan make you think that you have time. Don't let Satan distract you any longer. Time is running out. There isn't much time left. How you doing, sir? <clears throat> That's the bad news, but the good news is there's time today. So tonight... Or even now, pray to Jesus. Ask him to come into your life. Right? Go into your bedroom. Shut your door. Lock the door. Go into your closet if you have to. Have that private time with God. Say, Jesus, I need you. I'm tired of living this way. I'm tired of having this anxiety, depression. I'm tired of feeling emptiness. I'm tired of this loneliness in my life. I need you, Jesus. And watch what happens. Watch what happens to your life when you start to pray. You see, they did a study, and if you read the Bible, four days a week, anxiety and depression was reduced by over 60%. Just from reading the Bible, just from reading the Word of God, because the Word is alive. John chapter 1 says, Jesus is the Word. Whenever I read the Word, I feel fulfilled. I feel full. You see, sin leaves us feeling empty. Anytime you sin, you have to sin a bit more every time just to feel the satisfaction you felt before. You see, sin always leaves us feeling empty. But Jesus says, the water I give you, you will never thirst again. You will feel full. That's why when I got baptized, I felt full. I felt light. I felt good. All right, I was filled up with his water. See, sin will leave you empty. 
but Jesus will leave you feeling full. Your cup will be overflowing. So you have to decide you want to continue to seek after sin, which will leave you feeling empty. Every time you sin, you have to sin a bit more to get that same satisfaction, a bit more and a bit more. Do harder drugs, more perversion until you're stuck in the pit and you're feeling empty. You're feeling stuck. You don't know how you got there. You don't know how to get out. I'm here to tell you, Jesus Christ is standing next to you, waiting to lift you up out of that pit. He will wash you white as snow by his blood that he shed on the cross. There is power in his blood. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Brother. God bless you. That's why all these other religions, they all talk about Jesus. They all talk about the divinity of Jesus. But to leave out the one crucial part, the power of the death and resurrection of Jesus. That's how we get our salvation. By what he did on the cross. Imagine that. Claiming a piece of the Judeo-Christian truth but taking away the most powerful aspect of it. The death and resurrection of Jesus on the cross. That's how we get salvation. Because remember, the wages of sin is death. This is a price that has to be paid. A perfect and holy God has to have this righteous justice. That's why Jesus had to come to the earth. He had to die on the cross. I want you to understand something. Jesus was, was afraid. He prayed before it happened. He knew it was going to happen. He knew he was going to suffer. He knew he was going to die. And he said, God, please, Father, please, if there's any other way, take this cup from me. But he knew there was no other way. The cup remained. That's why you were bought at a very high price. See, God loves you very much that in order to save you, he had to sacrifice his one and only begotten son, who was perfect. But when Jesus rose from the dead, he defeated death. He went into heaven. Now he sits at the right hand of the Most High God. He said, all the power and authority has been given to me in the heavens and the earth. Be given to Jesus. That's why Jesus says, I am the truth. I am the way. I am the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. He's the only one. He's the only way. He claimed. So he spoke to all these other religions that talk about Jesus. And saying he's uh, one of the ways. But our way is also okay. It's not what Jesus says. How are you doing? Jesus himself says he is the only way. He's the only one that died for you. I want you to look at the world history. What happened 2,023 years ago? You see our calendar tells us something happened. What are we counting up from? 2023, what happened 2,023 years ago? The birth of Jesus. This was such an event that our entire worldly calendar is surrounded by it by what Jesus did on the, on the cross, by his ministry, the things that he did. It was even spoken of by Tacitus, who was a Greek historian. Tacitus didn't like Christians, yet he wrote about them. See, the Greeks are great historians. But Tacitus said Jesus died at the hands of Pontius, or he suffered at the hands of Pontius Pilate. And his followers also suffered at the hands of Nero, killing him in the Colosseum, was feeding them to lions and burning them torturing the Christians and the more that he tortured the more new ones rose up because the truth was out there people saw too much they saw all the miracles that Jesus performed even bringing Lazarus back from the dead three days he was in the tomb no one else can boast this all the miracles that he performed that's why these other religions have to accept it they have to acknowledge what Jesus did. We saw too much. The world saw too much. And I know God is pulling on you right now. He's pulling on your heartstrings. It's not too late for you. You're hearing this message. God already chose you. He already loves you. But you also have to choose him. He already died for you. He already made a way for you. He has the keys in his hand for the door that's open just for you. God has doors for you. No one else, just for you. God has a door for you. And you have to walk that straight and narrow path to get to that door. You have to walk that straight and narrow path to go through that door, to receive your blessings, to receive your gifts that God has for you in your life. You have any questions, sir? My boss is coming. I just wanted to listen to you for a bit. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't truly. I have different reasons to not 
give you Christianity and stuff like that. How come? Um, what's what's uh, your reason? Well, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like it really represents everyone. Now, let me let me make this clear. Yeah. I don't hold any hate against you for going out here. There's some Zionists who come out here and they yell at people saying they're going to rape and kill them. Um, and that, by the way, they come on the weekends, so when you're, they come down you're talking here... talking about the Hebrew Israelites? Yes. Yeah. I'd be a little careful when they come down here today. I, I've already yeah. dealt so, with them a lot of times. Yeah, because yeah. I feel bad for the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, because they don't do anything. They, get, <laughs> they just stand there and let, they, they just take it while they rip up their stuff. Um, I don't think they would do that to you, <laughs> or, or you'd let them, but... No, I was... I'm religious in the sense that I believe there's a God. I'm just looking around, if you know what I mean. I got you. Yeah. So, you know, uh, the Bible says if you seek truth with your whole heart, you'll find it. Um, so I truly believe if you really are continue to, to peel back the layers, right, like an onion. I know. I, I I one thing, thing you said about Jesus. history, um, about even the Greeks writing about it, the Armenians, um, the, the, what's his name, King something, Arbers II, he actually wrote to his, his friend, the governor of Egypt, and also... Uh, Syria, yeah. that he actually wrote to God, and there's supposedly a letter still, of him writing, and then he was healed of gout or whatever. Yep. And the reason Armenia is a very Christian country, yeah. because their king said, well, we're a Christian country now, because I was healed. Yeah. I don't know if that story is true, but it would fall in line of what I'm you're sure saying. Is, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> on accounts like that, you know, it's kind of interesting. But then, you know, there's still accounts of Muhammad, uh, prophet, and there's also accounts of uh, <clears throat> Buddhist miracles. I'm not... So I'm right now looking around, because um, obviously all of those have a sort of context, and you know, regardless if you think the other ones are just demons or, 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 or false preaching, they still happen, you know. I still want to like look around and you know, yeah. watch, watch, watch one, you know, <laughs> watch one of these was well, one a work that, of a miracle, and watch one of these was yeah. just deception. The, the thing that I look at is, uh, what religion today do you know of that is highly mocked more than any other religion, or highly persecuted? Oh, there is that. Well, the most, though, in the, the most. in the U.S., uh, Jews, Do you, and also Christians. Uh, I yeah, I think more so Christians. Even it also in, even depends in, on what country. I have a friend from. Uh, I have a friend from Bangladesh. They really, really hate Hindus. I'm making that yeah. clear. Um, yeah. They really, really hate Hindus, and also in India, they really, really hate Muslims. They'll, they'll beat you up over it. <laughs> so. Well, fair point. But I, um, if you look at. Uh, I like to look at testimonies, like near-death experiences, you know. Uh, YouTube has a lot. There's a lot of places you can find them, but uh, people who have died, right, come back to life. These are these are Hindus, these are atheists, these are Buddhists, these are Muslims. 99.9% uh, .9 of them saw Jesus, right? So that's a, that's a path that I think you should go down. It's very interesting. I think a question that I have for you, and you know, it's a very simple question. Sure. If somebody had no knowledge of God, let's right. say it's uh, 300 B.C., Yep over inside of South America. They had no knowledge of God, so they didn't have an opportunity right. to be able to accept God or before that, the, Jew, the Jew, Jewish customs from the yep. Torah. Yep. How are those individuals saved or offer, offered a chance at salvation if they did, were not given a chance? Yeah, uh, Romans 2 talks about that. Can I read it for you real quick? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yep. my new Bible. I don't think I have it highlighted, but I'll find it. <clears throat> I got some highlights. So here it says, uh, for as many as have sinned without the law, that's what you're talking about, mm -hmm. they don't have any knowledge, right? Will also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law will be judged by the law. For it is not the hearers of the law that are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. For when Gentiles, so that's the people mm -hmm. who aren't Jews, who have uh, do not have the law, by nature do the things in the law, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves, who show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves their thoughts accusing or else excusing them. In the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. So um, that takes care of that. If they did, had no knowledge of God, mm -hmm. right, but still uh, lived righteously, right, um, then they will be judged accordingly. 
right? God's a just God. So Same you, thing with Abraham. So if you were given a chance, you're held up to a standard, but if you're not given a chance, you're held up to a different standard? Well, you're Again, judged. Again, it's, it's still the same standard. Let me make, make that clear. Yeah, well, I want you to think of Abraham, right? Abraham was before the law of Moses, mm -hmm. before Mount Sinai, so before the covenant. Yep. And it says his faith was given to him for his righteousness, right? So his faith in God. So it was accounted to him for righteousness. So, so would you assume that people who did good works before hearing the law are saved? Or well, that's least, what the Bible says. They're going to be judged differently. Yeah, they're going to be judged accordingly, it says. Right? Their right. conscience bearing witness said not. They're written on I'm the not going to lie. I've gone to so many events, so many things, even stuff over at Wayne State's campus. Yeah. Um, and nobody really brought up that verse. Yeah, see, uh, that, that's Obviously, that verse works because... It does. The main, the main thing is what a lot it of does. people say. They say, well, they're just not going to be able to be saved. And I, 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 that's one thing that I've always wondered about Christianity is if you're going to have to really have a religion, it has to be universal. There can't be any cracks, you might say. And I would assume a really big crack is, what about all the other people? Because usually when you look at a religion, it's regional. So these people, right. or these certain people, they don't actually have a process for people who would actually hear, heard. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know if you heard me. I don't know if I said it when you were here, but I said I'm not talking religion, I'm talking relationship. That's what so, my father says every single time we were safe. Yeah, and so. you know, unfortunately, a lot of churches, uh, I call it, they do the traditions of men. Right, so we have these wrong traditions that are that are passed down, that seeped into the church, and the church teaches it without truly reading the scriptures and knowing what the scriptures say. And I can give you another example. Um, Jesus Himself says, "When you pray, okay, so this is Jesus Himself." You not pray out in the open like the Pharisees. No, but... well, He's saying, yeah, He's talking about yeah. that, but this is a different. That's actually the same section. Oh. After that, He says, "Do not be repetitive when you pray. Like, don't." Like, you know how the Catholics, right? So they're Christians, supposedly, right? They do the rosary. So they repeat and rosary over and over things, again. Yes. Yep. But Jesus himself says, when you pray, don't be repetitive. Like the heathens, he says, they, they think they'll be heard from the many words. He says, your Heavenly Father knows what you need before you even ask him. He knows what you want. He doesn't want you to just be repetitive like a drone, like, a, you know, a miracle. He wants you to actually speak to him like a father, right? He wants you to... Just, and that's when Jesus does the prayer, like, speak like, pray like this. How you doing, sir? What's up, brother? Yeah, yeah, it's been a long time, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> you didn't have your bike, man. I didn't recognize right. you without your bike. Yeah, I got the beard now. Yeah. yeah. How you been, man? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, Good. so that's a one example of the traditions of men, right? And Jesus himself says, do not call anyone father but my father in heaven, right? Do not call anyone on our father. Or they do, they call their priest father. And Paul tells us, you know, Paul tells us, uh, he says, I think it's in 2 Timothy, he says, there's going to be a falling away in the, in the future. He said that the church is going to give over to uh, doctrines of demons. They're going to forbid their people to marry and abstain from eating certain foods. So if you look at the Catholic Church, I'm not trying to rip on the Catholic Church, but it's a good example. If you look at the Catholic Church, their nuns and priests can't marry, right? So Paul tells us this in latter days, and this was hundreds of years after Paul wrote this letter, you know, 325 AD after the Council of Nicaea, they forbid their priests to marry, their nuns to marry. See what I'm saying? So it's the traditions. So the Bible clearly says. What's that? So this adding laws on top. Right, right. It, all you got to do is go to the scriptures. Scripture says not to do that because it even tells us that a bishop or a priest, a preacher, a priest, is to be the husband of one wife. So you're supposed to get married. He actually wants you to have a family so that way you be the head of a family, well, you bring family up, structure. You bring up a good question. Because so you're going to run a church, you have to know how to run a family. Yeah. Right. Well, you bring up two questions. Yeah. Um, a lot of different cultures, they have multi-family households, multi-generational households. Let's, put, let's make it more clear. Yeah. So they have multiple different generations of people taking care of all the children. Okay. Is that still what you would consider a family unit? You mean like uh, a husband has more than one wife, you're saying? No, or? no. Oh. Well, again, I have two questions, but the one question is... Sure. Multiple families living inside the same house taking care of each other's children. It, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying, you know, somebody having multiple wives. I'm not saying okay, that. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, you know, if a mother and a father have, have to work because they're able-bodied or something, compared to somebody else inside the household, very common, I would assume. I, I, I think, I know in Bangladesh, because I talked to my friend quite a bit about this. Okay, yeah. But I'm not sure inside of India. I think that would maybe be more, a little bit more common there. But that general... Uh, uh, Asian, Southern Pacific kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Is that still following your belief? You mean, you, do I think that's a sin to do that? or? Yeah. No, I don't know when the Bible doesn't say that. Like, okay. like if you have, like, my aunt live with me and my aunt takes mm -hmm. care of my children and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's nothing in the Bible All about right. that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But just know, the Bible tells us that when you do it God's way in Matthew 6, 
that he will give you everything that you need. So he will give you a roof over your head, he'll give you food, clothing, shelter, well, all that I, stuff. I don't, I, that's, that's, pre, that's, that's like the one TV preacher, so pre, 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 preach. I'm not talking on. prosperity, yeah. I'm not talking, yeah. I'm not saying you're going to be a billionaire, you're going to be a billionaire. I didn't say he's going to give you everything you want. That's not what the Bible says. Well, there's also people he says who he'll give you everything, everything that you need. Also still Christians. What's that? There's still also, I know, I know the entire thing, there's still people who are not Christians who don't have everything they need, right? Yeah, they're not Christians. Uh, the, well, no, I'm talking like people who are Christians. Well, they're no, not, not. I'm not saying like going to the church, but they're Christians, but they might be homeless or something like that. Well, that's that's what I'm saying. They're not. Uh, they're not doing it his way, and I'll, and I'll give you an example. And I've personally seen this. I've seen people who are homeless on the street. I knew a guy, and he started getting saved. And uh, he would tell me stories like, "Man, I, I prayed to God. I said, God, I need I need boots." Because he, he walked out, and there was a pair of boots standing there. No one was around. And he said, "God, I need a coat." And he said, a guy came up to him. That day, with a brand new huge coat, he said, "Here, I'm going to give you this." Gave him a coat. He was telling me these stories. Well, is it now? I don't see is it. Is it the individual <laughs> praying what affects somebody else, or is it God affecting that person? What do you, what do you mean? God, God will. I think I, what I'm saying is I. I don't like religions that preach. You know, if you do it this way, you're going to have everything you need. Because well, there's a lot of people who you might say are believers, who are persecuted and they don't have everything. Look at missionaries instead of foreign countries. They don't have everything they need, but they still preach, right? They, they have, I, I would disagree. I think they have everything they need. They're not rich. That's not what Jesus preaches, right? The, the so you're not, you're not, you're not preaching, you know, you're going to have a house, you're going to be satisfied. Well, you, what are you saying? You're, you're going to need what you, you're going to get what you need. Is that everything correct? Everything you need, yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah. And, and everything you need might not be a house or it might not well, this, this is what Jesus, this is what okay. Jesus himself, words in red are whenever Jesus speaks, yep. it's in red. Right? He says, therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall I eat? What shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek, so there's two caveats he's gonna tell you. But first, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added to you, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So, um, if, and, and I've seen people that are in church, and Jesus even, says it, he says they profess me with their lips but their hearts are far from me right look at the pharisees he called them whitewashed tombs right they were like evil inside he said and there's another spot i have to look at i forget that where it's at but it says they walk in righteousness but not in my power right so they're they're doing the laws but they're not their hearts are far from him they're not walking in his power and authority because they're not truly saved they're not truly they don't have a true relationship with him right and so a lot of times there could be people who are christians or people on the street I'm not saying they're not Christians, but they're not doing what he says to do. Remember, you have, in order to receive those blessings, and I think you heard it, but, uh, do, don't, you have to don't walk they through need that an door. opportunity? God will give don't, them opportunities. Don't you need an individual, like let's say like the code example. Sure. There needed to be another Christian or, or a good kind of person who would be able to actually do that, correct? And for God to be able to influence them, correct? Uh, God, God will, he doesn't have to, but he will uh, use someone else to perform, to fulfill something, because by that time he's blessing two people. That's how God works, right? I, I saw a guy on television, he was in Alaska, right? And he was lost in the snow, he's gonna die. And so he prayed to God. He wasn't a Christian, but he said, God, if, can you please help me? And an Eskimo randomly found him, an Eskimo, just in the middle of nowhere. And he actually said this, it made me mad. He said, God didn't save me that day, but the Eskimo did. And I thought to myself, who sent that Eskimo? God obviously sent that Eskimo. He, he found you in the middle of nowhere, there's a needle in the haystack. The Eskimo found, actually found you before you died, I mean. You know, and so God will do that. He will send it. He doesn't have to, right? God uh, took, who, uh, who was he? Took him by the head and brought him to that um, uh, Ethiopian, mm -hmm. uh, the eunuch. Okay. Right? Remember that? He took him, he teleported him. An angel did it, right? An angel teleported, um, what was his name? I forget his name. Teleported him to, to the eunuch. The eunuch taught him about God. They baptized him. And then he I took know, the so eunuch. I talking about, yeah. yeah. And he took the eunuch and teleported Good. him somewhere yeah. else. You know, uh, Daniel was in the, the lion's den and he was hungry, right? Remember God says, you yep. seek, right? So I'll provide for you. So this one guy cooked a really good meal and the angel said, hey, Daniel needs it. So he, the angel took that meal from the guy and the guy said, oh, here you go. And gave it to Daniel. See what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. God, God will do things supernaturally. But he doesn't have to. He'll use other people. But again, he doesn't have to use other people. He can, Jesus says, uh, God can take these stones and make them descendants of Abraham if he wants to. He can do, he's God. Are you coming from a certain belief, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, uh, my parents were Baptists. Okay. Uh, you? Um, I'm, I'm religious. He's kind of just seeking a little bit, yeah. you know, he's just... So you're religious? Uh, I, 
Who he believe you believe you're agnostic, yeah, I would say, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Spiritual. Like I've obviously if you look around the world, if you say, Oh, the Big Bang, uh, or if you or evolution or something, sure. that might be true. But it had to come from something. Sure. Yeah, the, you can't just, you, know, you you sell yourself a buildings made up correct windows glass stone. You can't you can't lo just look at a building and say, oh, it just appeared. Right. Um, it was just random. Yeah, the, yeah, the the building yeah. the, the bricks just randomly fell on top of each other, and the the wire randomly ran yeah. itself, and yeah, you can't the plumbing and electrical. You can't say that to the same exact logic goes. You know, obviously there has to be something out there. Yeah, yeah. So safe to say you don't adhere to what your parents believe in, or is there something that kind of deterred you from that, or what? I, I was in the side of foster care. And then my, when I say my parents, I mean my uh, foster parents. Okay. Oh, I see. So. So you don't believe what they're, they're. Well, let's say before foster care, my biological parents were also quote unquote Christians. I got you. Okay. I got you. Um, and that kind of really deterred me. Yeah, I, well, I, I can understand that. Yeah, yeah, I can understand. Or... They were, they were non-nominational. Okay. So you had a bad experience, or yes, yeah. and that's something I'd like to go with strangers. But okay. yeah, 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 enough, enough to deter us. So, when again, I'm not, okay. I'm not holding it against Christians. Right. right. Okay. I just, I just want to. Yeah. I was going to take. Around. Don't take man's reasoning and somehow equate it to God, right? Yeah, Jesus. So they may adhere yeah. to say I'm a Christian, but they're, you know, whatever they've done to you, mm -hmm. don't do. A lot of people have done stuff in the name of Jesus, Correct. and he yeah. says, right. "Get away from me, you, you right. evil doer! I've never knew you." Yeah. Jesus mm -hmm. says. Uh, so you do believe that yeah. there is something far greater in the world, yeah? Yes, yeah. spiritual. Not Jesus. So you just don't believe that it's God. Mm -hmm. You don't believe that it's God, or you do? I, I believe there's something out there. Okay. Just I, God. I'm just trying to look, and like I said to him, you know, I research religions all the time, like. Okay. Yeah, he's agnostic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Agnostic okay. means you okay, believe. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So you're not discrediting that God. You're just no, I am not. I, I'm not going to. Like I said to him, there's multiple accounts from multiple sure. different. Look at look yeah. at Armenia. Yeah. Armenia, the Armenian king, one of the first kings, yeah. actually heard about Christ or Jesus, yeah. wrote to him, yeah. and said, "Hey, can you actually heal me from gout or whatever it was?" Right. And he says, "Well, since you believed and you didn't even see me, later on I'll actually send somebody to go and do so, uh, a follower of mine to go." To and lo and behold, somebody did go to him over inside of Armenia. And that is why Armenia was a Christian nation okay. before, of yeah. course, they got invaded by by, by the right. uh, by the Turks. Right. So they same were, thing yeah. with the Ethiopians. That that unit uh, came back. He had the scroll of Isaiah. Yep. Yep. And he no, went I, back. I, and, yeah. And there, there's a quite honestly historic records, and they hold those documents sacred. They're orthodox now, but they still they still believe. You're like, yeah, we had a letter from our king going, and then there was also a letter from the Armenian king writing to the governor of or the pilot of Egypt and also Iraq, saying, hey, uh, the Jews, they kind of crucified Christ. Uh, you need to do something. And he's like, well, I can't do anything right now because I'm right now fighting a rebellion. Yep. I think it was Libya or something like that over there. But when I get back, I'll deal to uh, accordingly, based up on your advice. Yep, and that actually it has this sort of significance because the Jews were then kicked out of Israel by him. So it's like, uh, historically speaking, yeah, yeah, um, yeah they ended up getting, so you, uh, <laughs> the thing is, you can't discredit that there was a person named Jesus Christ, right? and he 100% did these miracles. Historically, yeah. historically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can't have a king write, writing to a governor of another country saying, hey, uh, what I mean governor, mm -hmm. yeah, I understand governor Pilate, I, I understand and saying. then he comes back and then he expels the Jews for their crimes, right. and, or, and harsh treatment. You can't. You, you I mean, even Nero, yeah. Nero. They Nero. know, they know that you know. Oh yeah, this a hundred percent happened. Yeah. It's on the you know right. Exodus Center. I forget what it's called. But I don't. I think even the Jews don't. I think even the Jews believe that there's Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Um, but not that Jesus is scripture. Though. Yes. Correct. In the same. But then there's other things. Obviously, there was Muhammad. Yeah. And Muhammad said that basically. Well, that Jesus warned about that. There's going to be that, false that, that, he would, yeah, that he would usher in the new heaven and the new earth. Sure. And, or at least a new a Christian empire, yeah. or you know, Muslim empire, or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, he t he helped create the caliphate. Right. <coughs> so, um, and then you also look at Buddhists, and there's a lot of shit. What I believe, what I mean by that, obviously, I believe these things happen. Right. It's discerning between what was a miracle by God or whatever, right. and what was just the deceit. Yeah. I'll so give you an Okay. Yeah, I was uh, say, essentially, that it's safe to say that there was a founding truth of some sort, right? Yes. So what ends up happening is man is taken from that original source and basically adulterated it. 
So what Take you, you see in the world today with the Hindus and the Buddhists and whoever else, these you know Eastern religions, anything outside of what the truth is, is a an adulterated from the truth. So that answers your question. So there has to be an absolute truth. What is that truth? That's God's word. So if you take the other religions of the world, you will find certain similarities of scripture. That's like your Muslims. And they believe in Muhammad and everything that they believe. There's certain things within Muhammad's teachings that are very similar to scripture. Well, but are very I want to make it clear. They do believe. They do believe in the Bible. They, they believe, believe in, in the Old and New Testament. Yeah, they don't. They, they believe that Jesus was a good teacher. Right. They, yeah, they, they disregard don't. the New and Old Testament. I've debated them many times. Uh, yeah. They actually say, this is corrupted, the Old and New. Right. The Tanakh is the Jewish Bible. Right. The Tanakh's been corrupted, and the, the uh, Christian Bible's been corrupted. Right. Only our Bible has. It's the truth. And I'm yeah. thinking, I'm like, hold on a second. Logically think about this. Yeah. You were saying you, you were the last of it. Right. And you're piggybacking off the truth of the Judeo-Christian moral standard, right. but yet the documents that prove against Right. Muhammad are, are false right. and I, I didn't understand that logic yeah. Plus they and, also have other outside yeah. I'll give you an example uh, oh, there's over 200 prophecies in the Tanakh the Jewish Bible and Jesus fulfilled every single one and I'll give you I'm just gonna read real quick one of them this is Isaiah 53 it's one of my favorite ones it, it's talking about there's gonna be a man remember this 800 years before Jesus was born mm -hmm. so this is old and this is verified through the Septuagint, which was written in 250 BC, which is the, the Greeks translated from the Hebrew text. So we have this, we have the Septuagint, we have the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's been all been verified. It says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. We, like sheep, have all gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Who does that sound like right now? It sounds like Jesus, right? Now I'm going to keep going. So I'm going to keep going. It says, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Now this is verified. This is a, a marker here. In Matthew 27, it says Jesus was, when he was being accused, he didn't open his mouth. He said he didn't speak. He stayed quiet. So right here is a marker. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before it shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. So right there's a marker that leads us to Jesus. I'll keep going. It says, <clears throat> For the transgressions of my people he was stricken, and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death. Another marker that points to Jesus. Matthew 27, it says, There was a rich man who gave Jesus his tomb. So Jesus was buried in the rich man's tomb. So that's two markers here, identifying markers in Isaiah 53. Not only did he do all this, he was obviously, our sins were placed upon him, and this is what it's talking about. But there's two identifying markers. He was silent before his accusers, and he was buried in the rich man's tomb, right? And it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Why did it please him? Because the sin was on him. A righteous judge has to have that justice. Um, it says, uh, he has put him to grief when you make his soul an offering for sin. He made a soul an offering for sin. I keep going, but that's just one of the prophecies, and there's tons of them. Uh, Psalms 22, it says, I don't know if you know this, when Jesus was speaking on the cross, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, right? He said those words. If you go to Psalms 22, he was leading us to Psalms 22. The very first verse in Psalms 22 is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken? And in Psalms 22, it says, they're going to pierce his hands and his feet. This was before crucifixion. Right? This is the time of David. This is before, they said they're going to pierce his hands and his feet. It said they're going to cast lots for his clothing. And in Matthew 27, they cast lots for his clothing. It said they're going to mock him when he's, they're going to mock him saying, Save yourself. If you're God, save yourself. If you're the Son of God, ask God to save you. In Matthew 27, they did exactly that. So there's tons of prophecies. Said he's, the Messiah is going to be born in Bethlehem. Jesus is born in Bethlehem. So I can keep going. There's over 200 of these. And that's my point. There's a lot of truth there of the, the prophecies that have been fulfilled from the Old Testament. And Jesus did every single one. Do you have right? a question? Yeah. No, uh, so I think, yes, you're 100% right. But yeah, you yeah. bring up a good question as well, predestination. Mm -hmm. So obviously there's a prophecy that this would happen. Yep. But were the Jews forced into crucifying him? No, you see... Just because God knows it it's going to happen, happen correct? right? Well, it, yep. God knew yes. it was going to happen. So that's the difference, right? People think just because you have knowledge of something. Let, let's say I, I have knowledge that this car is going to rear end the other car, right? Does that mean I caused it? No. I just knew it was going to happen. See what I'm saying? Now, I can't stop it because of free will. Yep, and, right? yep, and again, and again, there's the entire theory of God is outside of time. He is. He, he sees all of time, so it doesn't mean that you don't have free will just means he already knows yeah we as we as his creation are subject to time god is not in order to create think about this in order to create time space and matter you have to exist outside of it correct right in order to create that so because it has to be created all at the same time
right? Mm -hmm. You have to have matter, you have to have time for the matter, or when it, I mean, it's, it's just so complex for us. And that's but, what separates us from God, yeah. because God is all-knowing. We, with the mind that we have, we have enough ability to wrap our head or understand certain things, but then there are certain things that we don't which we as creations have to take by faith if we're believing in God, certain things we can understand. We can get a general ideal of certain things, like you were saying, predestination. Yeah. Were we predestined, or was God predestined, or were there certain things in time predestined? Sure, God predestined that he was going to create this earth, there was going to be a creation, Christ was going to be that sacrifice that he just talked about. <coughs> he knew this ahead of time. Well, I think a verse that I like to go to inside of Esther, when yeah. she's like, yeah. why does this have to be me? Yeah. I believe it's hung, her uncle said, well, it doesn't have to be you and God will be able to pick somebody else. Correct. It does not imply that there is true choice of that kind of a branch branch well. theory, because obviously she didn't do it, God would have been like, well, next person. Or do you think it was only said? I think God knew what she was going to choose, right? When God chooses somebody, he knows their, their main choice. So you're saying he, they, he just said that to you? I'll know, give you an example of um, the opposite. I remember we talked about this with Hebrew Israelites that one day. Mm -hmm. um, when God went to Moses. I've met you before, haven't I? Maybe. <laughs> but you know the... He's always on a bike, usually. Oh. He's usually I'm always around. All right. Yeah, he's always yeah, around. <laughs> God went to Moses and said, Moses, I need you to go speak to my people, the Israelites. Mm -hmm. And Moses says, no, 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 I'm, I'm slow speech. Please don't do it. He's like, please just do it. I need you to do this. He said, no, no, no. So God pleaded with him to do it. Moses said, no, 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 no. God said, okay, fine. Fine. I'm going to bring your brother Aaron to help you. So Aaron went with him. Now, see, he didn't do what God wanted. Right? God didn't force him. He said, no, 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 you're going to do this. I want you. I'm telling you to do this. You're doing it. But the only God reason do. that Moses didn't want to do it because he didn't think he had the eloquent words to speak right. mm -hmm. or to portray what God wanted him to do. That's why he was putting it on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so God so, said, okay, I'm going to bring Aaron, your brother, to help yeah, you with it. Yeah. So, again, God didn't force Moses. He, he gave him the free will. He he really wanted him to. He's like, please, I need you to do this. I want you to do this. And he kept saying, no, 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 no. So he said, okay, fine. I'm going to bring Aaron. So so that that's that choice of he still had a choice and he didn't do it. So like what's what is what's the I guess what is the, the hindering point of you believing that God actually exists? Well, I think like I said before, I want to know because obviously all around the world there's miracles, yeah. obviously, yeah. and there's historical accounts of these miracles. Right. But there's got to be something stay. that's actually hinging you from saying, okay, I believe. I mean, you have enough evidence around you. You're saying like there's. I think enough it's shifting through the so. evidence, it, and yeah. you might say, well, you know, it's just the devil hindering you. It could be. I'm not. <laughs> we can't, we can't blame you. everything on the devil, though, right? Yeah. Because essentially, yeah, like you said, yeah. you have a free will, and God tells yeah. us in His word 100%. 100%. that we won't be able to stand before Him without understanding that, because He's given us plenty of evidence. If we look around, we can see everything around us and know that there is something far greater. Yeah. Scripture even tells us that God has placed it in every man to know Him. So there is this longing that you want to fill that gap, that void of what God is. I want to say thank you, man. That was speaking hey, God to bless me. You, man. Oh, God bless you, man. Good. God brought you here for a reason, yo. <laughs> so, I mean, you're, it sounds like you're pretty familiar with Scripture, though, right? I, I know enough elementary level. Correct. Yeah. Um, so you understand that, like, God has placed something in, the, in each of his I creation. Sure though. Whatever it is. Yeah. Um, I wish whatever think... does. I think I'm actually why I stopped because I'm right now shipping out for basic training. Okay, yeah. but so, let me yeah. let me read real quick Absolutely. what you said. It says, uh, um, <clears throat> We're in Book of Romans. Mm -hmm. yeah. It says, also, yeah, Romans one, suppress the truth and unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Right. So. So you can use that. We, we all know. Like we saying. all know God exists. Every you mind order. saying that one more time? My mind was kind of on yeah, a, a sure, different yeah, trail. Yeah, sure. I'm so sorry just about that. No, you can. Place value on that too. So it's not always Satan doing it, right? Mm -hmm. So when you listen to Romans, also there's iniquity in you, right? There's sin in you. Mm -hmm. There's a certain rebellion in you that doesn't want to get over and say, "Okay, I believe God." Yeah, I'll read right? even even Romans. further ahead yeah, or Romans. behind it. It talks about that. Yeah. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Who suppress the truth of un in unrighteousness? Because what they, what may be known of God. Yeah. Right now, Satan don't want us to hear. 
here's this message, right? Go back up to the top. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to yeah, yeah. go back up to the top. Yeah. So listen to what he's saying. Mm -hmm. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because what may be known of God is manifest in them. For God said? has shown it to them. Yeah. So what I'm telling you is that God has placed it in you to know him. What you're doing is essentially suppressing that. You're saying... We suppress that truth. Yeah, you're suppressing that truth, right? Because there's evidence all around you saying well, God is I haven't argued that there's evidence So I'm saying, I'm backing, like, yep. everybody wants to blame Satan. You, the creator, <clears throat> will take that knowledge and say, well, I'm going to suppress it. Or I'm going to hold back a little bit. Or I'm, I'm not really set to say... You know, that's, that's At least point, he, well, he knows God exists, though. So that's, I think, that, I you're think, there. I, you're halfway there. Right? I think I think one thing which we've been pushing me recently... Yeah. So I'm going to be shipping out for basic training, yeah. and then I'm going to be in the Army. Yeah. yeah. In between me and my sister, we encounter terrorism over inside of Camp Derby, Italy. Yeah. Mm. We're going to go to war. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't... I don't I think I should really smart enough on what I believe oh, yeah. before I have to ship out for something like yeah. that. I was preaching that earlier. I think you might have heard it. Uh, life on Earth is over like this compared to the next life. Right? And I always like to use the analogy. You might have heard this too. Uh, take a piece of rope and wrap it around the Earth a thousand times or a trillion times, right? Then take a sliver of red tape and put it at the beginning of the rope. That sliver of red tape represents life on Earth here. The rest of the rope represents the next life. How important is that? You got to look at that in context of man life on earth is so short right and and you know i think that's god's grace because we're on this earth to suffer because through suffering god helps us grow right have compassion and strength and courage through suffering because I of free will say, i wouldn't say we were placed on earth to suffer we're well, suffering we're suffering because of sin because of sin, and free will one man yeah. but god allows it right. because he, right. he he will take what satan uses to destroy us like right. satan uses the suffering to destroy us but god can flip yeah. it and use it to build a Just make sure you say that right because yeah. it's not like god created us and say okay you suffer <laughs> right like, no it's not like that we suffer because of one man's decision but yeah of rebellion yes mm -hmm. because he bought into the lie of what the woman told well, him, but right? then again then again yeah. was uh, you talk about um free choice and everything like that Absolutely. was it his choice to, to do that was it her choice to do that to to what uh, well, Adam Adam Eve. Eve. Yeah, well, you're well in order to have free will or in order to have true free will you have to have uh, you have to have the knowledge of you have to have well, no no in order to have right. true free will you have to have uh, be able to make a choice of good and evil. Without that tree being in the in the thing, if God puts you in it, like like let's say he puts a mouse in a in a box, but the box has nothing in it, nothing dangerous. Does that mouse have ch choice? No. no. The mouse can't choose anything bad. But if God puts you in here and says, okay, here's a choice of evil and here's a choice of good, I don't want you to don't choose this evil. Cause there's going to be consequences because there's always consequences to sin. It's attached to sin, mm -hmm. right? That's true free will. That's true choice. Then what about what about the devil about it? Did he have free choice as well? The angels have free choice? Yeah, that's why a third of them rebelled. I mean, a third of them left. God didn't stop them. God didn't say, uh, nope, we're gonna, I'm going to destroy you right now. God allowed it. So do they also have a chance at salvation or no? I have no idea. Uh, I know <laughs> obviously, Satan. Obviously, that's not an answer. That obviously, we wouldn't be able to know those answers. That's what the answer is. Well, well, the reason why I say I don't know is because of Peter. They created them, right? They're created beings. Mm -hmm. They had a choice, so they ended up believing the head angel, right? Which was Lucifer. One of the archangels, yep. Right, so they believed them. They had a choice. So was their salvation like our salvation? They had a choice, just like we did. Right? They're created beings. That doesn't make them a god. They're higher than us, yes. But they also had a choice, and they made that choice. Right? Lucifer himself, a created being. What did he do? He fell into his own what? He boasted about himself because look how God, you know, look how great he created me. His pride rose up in him, which then God said, oh, no. And he said, I will be like the most high. God, can, he's not going to honor that. He's going to cast him down to hell, right? So what he's doing is basically what man does every day, right? Does that make sense? According no. to the angels? Yes. Yeah. No, I think... I think I'll have to think about it, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate... Uh, the reason why I say it, sorry, real quick, First Peter 3, it says, For Christ also suffered, suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. So this is when he died on the cross. He was made alive by the Spirit. By whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who formerly were disobedient when once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared in which a few that is eight souls were saved through the water so he went and preached to the souls in prison so who that is it's vague but you know what i'm saying i don't know
But I do know that Satan, the beast, and the false prophet will be thrown in the lake of fire, and they'll be they'll suffer for their crimes. Right? You're righteous. You have to have a righteous judge, righteous justice. He did, he did a lot of evil, a lot of suffering. So, yeah. No, so. I. Again, you made you, one of the verses. If you, if I actually would like to write, uh, what was that Romans one two. verse Romans about? Two. Um, not that verse, but the first verse you said about, yeah, Romans uh, about Romans? Uh, people who don't know Romans the two. law. Romans two. Oh. I'll, I'll read it to you again. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't know the law, you know. Yeah, you're law for yourself. As long as yeah. you, yep. God, God judges the hearts of men. It says, uh, it's Romans 2, 13 mm -hmm. through uh, 22. Oh. Wait, sorry. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Romans 2, it is 12 to uh, 16, sorry. There we go. 12 through 16. Romans yes. the 12 through 16. Know. I'm not going to lie, not a lot of people... Uh, well, that's why I, I, I purposely, like, when I study the Bible, I pray to God to give me the truth, and I, I don't want the tradition of men to affect it, right? There's a lot of things that I believe that the church doesn't, and I believe that because the church has wrongfully done the tradition of men and twisted the truth, which changed the, the character of God a bit, and that always bothered me. All I'm going to do is read the Bible, and that, and that what the Bible says, the Bible says. I think the Bible is easy to understand. I think it's us that twist it and, and complicate it. You know what I'm saying? I think it's a man that complicates the Bible. You got it down? Yep. Okay. No, thank you. Hey, you're welcome. So when you get shipped off. Well, sometime later this month. Yeah. So, I'm right now going to MEPS. I'm figuring out all that. Okay. And then after MEPS, um, I've been told by the recruiter, like, oh, you're good. Okay. I scored a 53, I think 54 on the ASAM. Yeah. So above yeah. the 23. Usually okay. it's 31, but yeah. above the 23. What did you sign up for? What? What did you sign up for? I, I'll find out at MEPS because I have a lot of different options. Oh, so okay. So I'm, I'm doing Army. Oh, okay. Oh. At gotcha. MEPS, I'll get to kind of decide. I'm looking at geopolitical analysts um, or yeah. logistics. Yeah. I guess so. you do. You seem to like have like a left brain kind of kind of person. Well, like I, I analytical like, I like, kind to, of, I like yeah. to think about why things certain things happen and then yeah, I can see that. the entire process behind it. Yeah, I can so. see that. Crazy thing about it is that you'll never wrap your head around God. So yeah. that's, if that's so the amazing. goal, that's not gonna happen. So I think that's a fault of mine. Right. I, I like to figure right. out everything before I make a decision. Right. But what I'm saying so. is you won't find that because God. I know that's a, that's a problem. And no matter what you won't want to matter. But see, what the beautiful thing about it though is that you don't need to know everything about God because what God requires. Is faith. Mm -hmm. well, All let me, throughout scripture, that's what you'll see, is God requires simply faith in believing in what he's saying. That's all it is. Let me read Even what Jesus, Jesus had to say about that, wrapping yeah. your head around. It says, uh, are you, uh, Jesus? because the Nicodemus answered, how can these things be? And Jesus said, are you the teacher of Israel and you do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak that what we don't know and testify what we have seen. Uh, and you do not receive our witnesses. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? He's saying, if you can't understand the earthly things that are simple, how are you to understand heavenly things? You know, so heavenly things are really hard for us to understand and grasp and wrap our head around. Right. So that's why God requires faith. Yeah. That's it. Simple faith, childlike faith. That if you believe in me, meaning if you believe in God, believe in my son, believe what he's done on your behalf, and guess what? We have salvation. Today we have salvation. Israel had faith but it's what they had their faith in. They had to believe in the man Christ Jesus. Yeah. We today, we believe in Jesus, <clears throat> crucified Jesus. A lot of Jews did follow. A lot, a lot of Jews did say, Correct. oh, you know what? You are the Messiah. Yeah. I see it. There was a whole Christian sect called the Way. Right. They, they, as a huge church called the Way that right. knew Jesus was the Messiah. Right. They were waiting for him. They said, you're the Messiah. We know it, right. you know? Yeah. And Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, but a lot, so a lot of Jews did follow Jesus. It wasn't like every Jew rejected him. There was tons of Jews that followed him. But then you had the ones that, you know, their hearts were kind of, in my opinion, far it's from not God. The entire nation of Israel believed in who yeah. he was because their ideal of who Christ was was this reigning king that was going to come down and set up shop and do it. Because they wanted to kick out the Romans. Yes. No, that yeah. was their belief. You know, they didn't understand the prophecy, and that's why a lot of prophecies are hard to understand until they come to fruition. Yeah. Uh, the Messiah was supposed to come back first to serve, then the second time he comes back to rule. Yeah. They did not. They couldn't differentiate that. That there's two sets, right? The Messiah came back first to, to serve, to die for us. And then he comes back again the second time to rule as a king. They were only looking at the ruling king part. So they're like, you're not the Messiah. He's like, yes, I am. The scripture's here. I'm the Messiah. They reject it. Yeah. Even though scripture so clearly says. Uh, hopefully you don't put that off too long. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, exactly. I'll say <laughs> no, I'm just saying, don't try and get all your ducks lined up in a row and be like, oh, I got to have this. Yeah, this don't let, yeah. Believe, you know what I 
what I mean? Uh, you know, I especially now, like what you're saying, like you're getting ready to get shipped overseas. So I mean, well, I'm getting, I'm getting camp, sent down to Camp Lejeune. Correct. Get okay. basic training. Yeah. yeah. And then Whatever I'm you gonna, do, don't drink, gonna... <laughs> <laughs> don't drink yeah. the water. I want a settlement though. <laughs> don't drink I want a settlement water. though. Yeah. Um, I'm going to then go to the training for whatever, whatever I want to do because it yeah. has to do specialized training for their yeah. systems. Cool. And then I want to actually get a field job yeah. for either logistics or geopolitical analysts. Yeah. It's a little bit different than the office jobs because I know the people actually taking the collected information and figuring it out. I would actually be the person surveying or actually right. looking at the literal items that are there. Nice. So, yeah. cool. Maybe Make sure you get that squared away first. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Whatever you do, yeah, yeah. get that squared away. I, I, were you there yeah. when I talked about going, like, by yourself, lock your door, go in your closet, you have to, to pray to Jesus. Ask him to reveal himself to like you. Faith. Don't get all the answers. Just know that God exists. Yeah, just start, just start uh, God you know, crawling. Exists. He sent his son you know? to die for your sins, man. You, so you, don't, have to, you don't have to be sprinting right away. Just crawls or crit, like, no, just uh, seek you, it. Do you have, like, a YouTube channel or something I like do. That? Uh, Warrior Street Preacher. You can Warrior just type that in YouTube and mile will come up. It's WSP Ministries, but if you just say Warrior Street Preacher, it'll come up. All right. Yeah. As Paul says, I declare unto you the gospel. Moreover, brother, I declare unto you the gospel. If you believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I just God preached uh, Ann Arbor and the guy yeah. spit on me twice. Yeah. I, I got that. It's my latest video. You'll see it. Yeah. yeah. I think I think one last, I think one, um, I just kind of like one last question because I yeah. love asking people who are fairly religious, so no matter where they're from. Right. Like, that term is like really. Like it rubs the wrong way. Oh, I'm not religious. religious. Yeah, religious? religious. Yeah, not religious. You're, so you're, you're spiritual. The, you're spiritual, right? So what I'm saying, I would say I'm a I'm a Bible believer. I believe that God exists. I don't label myself. So you're a Christian. I don't know is that a correct way to put it? I would say I'm a Bible believer. Yes. Bible believer. Okay. Absolutely. A follower of, of Yeshua. Right. Of course. So a follower of Yeshua. Yeah. So when you say religion, that's almost like an insult because when Christ came to Earth and He did what He did on Earth, He didn't go, "Hey, I'm setting up this religion." Yep. And again, like I told him, it sounds yeah. like my dad. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I'm okay. But essentially, He did. Right, because religion is man-made. Mm -hmm. It's man's attempt to try to get back to God. Mm -hmm. It's God doing all the work. It has nothing to do with me. The only thing I have to do is simply put my faith and trust in what He has done. He's done it all. When He was on the cross, what did He say? It is finished. Finished. That's all I got to do. I got to believe that. That's it. So by me saying I'm religious, that really puts a bad taste in people's mouth because they equate that word to a lot of negativity. I have met. I feel like I met somebody like you, but he was a Jew. Possibly. But <laughs> I'm not a Jew. No, but, uh, yeah. but no. Um, I think one thing I like asking a lot of people, if you look around the world, it's kind of getting really, really shitty. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, do you think, especially with people not caring about one another or caring about the world that they live in, um, I'm not like a green freak or whatever, but I do believe that people aren't really respecting the world yeah. <laughs> as much as they should be. No. Do it's you think we're kind of like in the end days or something like I that? Do I do. Yeah. So do, do, you think, do you think it's hard to do your job if it's... Like that. Obviously, you don't stop because you're trying to get as many as possible up until the last moment. Yeah, Jesus says those who endure till the end will be saved, right? So, you know, you got to endure. Um, I'm here, in my opinion, I'm here to work. You know, uh, laborers few. You know, there's a lot of saying the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. So, right now, as a follower of Jesus, he's put me to work and I'm here to spread the gospel to every creature. And, um, so, I'm here to do work and I'm working. That's, the interesting until thing, though, is God says it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better, right? Yeah. A lot worse. So I think right now, we're just scratching the surface of what's going to come, right? Are we closer to that end? By all means. Every day, we're getting closer. So this is what I'm telling you. Don't hesitate going like, yeah, don't oh, put off. second guess. Don't what put I'm off saying the, yeah, is that the truth. That in itself is when you're looking at this world and you're going, something's not right. Well, you, you, don't a, have to be, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to look around correct, the world and be like, Correct, but a lot of people oh, sure. around here won't do that. They won't take that into consideration because what I'm saying is people right now, they have a mindset of like, they're out for their own. That's it. They don't have to look. Let's take a look at my sister Catherine. Uh, yeah. She is not religious at all. She's sure. an agnostic. Right. My sister's saying she's agnostic. But yeah. her thing is like, I'm too busy trying to think about how, what I'm going to be able to eat tomorrow right. or what I'm going to be able to put on the table. What, sure. I don't need to worry about speakers or anything like that or Halloween right and I like again I'm not I am not like you know Christian or anything like that but I do believe you know like if you're not even looking that's kind of a problem especially yeah. with everything happening in the world right. the um, sad thing is if she like I said Matthew 6 if she sought the kingdom first and righteous everything would be given to her provided for her. I've seen it God takes care of me every single day I have everything I need so grateful again I'm not talking prosperity I'm not talking to be what a do you do besides this like what? obviously you're a street preacher, but do you have like a job besides this? Or I, you I'm do? in I'm in flight school currently. Oh, flight school? Yeah. 
That's neat. I'm, I'm a pilot, yeah. I'm I had a friend who was commercial. in the Air Force. What's that? So, I had a friend in the Air Force who kind of kicked my butt into the Army. <laughs> yeah. I should have so. went to the Air Force when I was younger. I think that'd be kind of cool to fly. He didn't airport. fly, he worked in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Oh, okay. If you get my rift. Yeah, so I got you. I got you. He's an alcoholic now. Good guy, but um, <laughs> you know you don't need to have that type of responsibility. He right. wasn't even the actual person down there. Um, yeah. So nice. any, any other questions? No, I think that's it. I thank you, by the way, for that verse. Hey, you're welcome, so, man. I, you're, you're going to Camp Lejeune, you said, right? Yes. Uh, do you want me to pray for you about it? Like before, you want me to pray over you? If you'd like. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. You want to pray too, or you? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Heavenly Father. Uh, what's your name? Uh, Joe. Joe. See, man. Distractions, man. Distractions. Uh, Heavenly Father, we're gathered in the name of Jesus Christ. We know if two or more are gathered, you're here with us. So, Father, we pray over Joe right now. We pray, Father, that you can bless him. Uh, protect him, Father, as he goes to Camp Lejeune and, and goes into the service. And we just pray, Father, uh, that you can lift him up and pull on his heartstrings. We pray, Father, that you can take the scales from his eyes and ears. And it seems like he's seeking truth, Father. So we just pray that you can lead him on that right path, that straight and narrow path, Father. So we just ask, Father, that you uh, give him the peace, your peace that surpasses all understanding. Give him your love. Let him know how much you care for him. Let him know how much you really, truly do love him and how precious he is, how precious salvation is and how important it is to have a relationship with you, that you are the truth, the way, and the life, Yeshua. And so we just pray over Joe right now, Father, that you can bless him, put him on that right path, bless him with the truth. Put that that fire, your, your, your holy fire within his heart and really have him seek the truth, Father. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, God bless you, man. So if you get a chance to check out the uh, the story of Lydia. Lydia. If you're familiar with Lydia in the Bible? Yeah. yeah. Simply, she was kind of like the uh, like the beginning too. So it, all it took was her hearing the truth, and she believed on what Paul was saying, which a lot of people don't talk about Lydia. Yeah, Jesus said because his apostle says uh, like doubting Thomas, you know, like uh, yeah. like blessed are those who believe without seeing me, without seeing the holes in my hands, without seeing me risen from the dead. Blessed are them, you know. So. God bless. Yeah. Thank hey, you. Thanks, man. God bless Absolutely, you. Absolutely, man. Yeah, nice to meet you, man. Hey, God bless travels, you, man. Yeah? What? Safe travels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, it's good seeing you, man. It's been a while. Same.